I'm Alex Howard, and welcome to Conscious Two. My guest in the studio today is Claire Molinar. Hi, Claire. Hi, Alex. And Claire is an integral coach and co-creator of the unique self-coaching process. And in today's interview, we're going to be exploring what the unique self-coaching process is and how you can bring some of the tools and principles into your own life. So, Claire, welcome. And maybe as a starting point, we're going to come in a minute to some of your story and how you came to some of this work. But maybe just for people that aren't aware of it, what is the unique self-coaching process? Um, so the unique self-coaching process is a, is a change technology. It's a coaching program, a nine-month process that takes you through different levels of consciousness uh, from the regular, ordinary consciousness that we all know about, which is our separate self-consciousness, we call it, which is the, the consciousness you live by every day with. Um, and it, it, it um, works towards you realizing that you're not just that. Mm. And so we take you from that identification to your separate self to a sense that you're actually more than that. And that more than that is actually who you truly are, which is mm. your true self, true self, which is a consciousness that's beyond you, but it's also you, and it encompasses all consciousness. And from that place, we actually um, give you a sense of your unique essence from that place of being one with all that is. And and that unique essence is who you truly are and who you are in this world to mm -hmm. manifest. So the coaching process is a trajectory from a ordinary consciousness to your unique consciousness. And we do that through um, engaging in practices and uh, teaching you how to get to that expression of mm -hmm. yourself. It, it's fascinating. One of the things I want to get into in a little bit more is this idea of kind of a unique self and the idea of no self. Because, of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of teachings around there is no mm -hmm. self and we're all one, but how does that meet kind of showing up in the world? But before we come to that, just maybe a little bit about how did you come to be on a spiritual path and come, come to this work? Yeah, well... Um as long, as far as I can remember, I've always been obsessed by <laughs> liberation. I mean, <laughs> that was, that was kind of intense when I was a teenager. Uh, I just wanted to know how this things, how it works, you know, mm. how do I awaken? So I grabbed all the books I could, you know, since my yeah. teens and, and read a lot and started to practice and to, and to sit in meditation. And, and so I found teachers and I, you know, I tried everything. I tried so many different approaches and studied with the different teachers. Um, and so this has been like a quest, a real big quest. And I even thought that I was going to become a nun when I was oh, really? in my 20s. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, it was really intense. And at that time, I thought that you actually have to leave the world to awaken. And huh. this is how... Um, um, the world was presenting it pretty much like mm. this, and and um, it didn't turn out this way. I, I ended up, you know, getting married, having a, a intense family life. I raised three daughters, and that's about and as, had a life. about as, it, yeah, as a father really. of two small children right now. That's about as in the world as it gets, right? <laughs> exactly, and so I had to go through that, and that was my school. And so I learned to be in the world and be a working woman and uh, raising children and and just having a normal modern woman's mm. life and, and um, always practicing though. I mean, I've always been um, close to my meditation practice and to, um, to this quest. So and and how, just how, how was that? Being a mother of you know, three daughters, I, that sounds quite intense. And mm. how was it finding time and space for your practice whilst also being the one taking care of others yeah. and working and being in a relationship? Mm. And how, how was doing that? Well, sometimes it's very short, short practice. Right. Often for me, because I don't sleep much, it was at night because mm. night is quiet and mm. night was my time. So it's been a lot of uh, practice at night time. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Three in the morning, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah. All right. Um, it's been, a, and, and it's still, I mean, now I have more freedom. I still have mm -hmm. my daughters and, at home, and, and it's still intense, but it's different. Yes. And uh, there's more time for having a practice that I actually design and not have mm. to find. Yes, but yeah. it, it, it was all, it was all, you know, this, this years of um, intense raising children and practicing was so good. Uh, yeah, and it's, back. Uh, sure, and it, and it sounds like that there was a sincerity of commitment in mm. you that you were going to make the space and find the time for your practice. And so as that kind of unfolded, how did that then develop towards the, some of the work that you're doing now? Yeah, well, actually, as I'm talking to you, I realize how close this is to what I'm doing now because uh, I'm very, I'm someone that's really practical. I totally uh, value the, the, the gift of practice. Nothing mm. is gained without practice. And it's not about no pain, no gain. It's about, really, practice allows you to embody mm. new ways of being. And there's nothing like practice to do that. So you can have beautiful insights, and you know, as a coach, I coach people, and people have insights. We talk, you know, we, and mm -hmm. I take them to places where they actually have insights. Mm -hmm. But the insight without the embodiment through practice, changing the ways you do things, doesn't take you mm. where you want to go. Right, and it's interesting because I, I sometimes think that in the more some of the current teachings around spirituality, like practice gets a bit of a bad rap that it's like you know, if you're having to put in effort and you're having mm. to kind of work at your practice that somehow you know just go with the flow and let mm. it kind of how would you speak to that mm. kind of balance mm. of you know allowing mm. but also showing up yeah as you were speaking i was thinking about a a a, a uh, zen saying you know there is a, a student ask a student asked dogen you know why do why do we have to practice when we're enlightened? And um, Dogen responded, um, because we're Buddhas, so we practice. That's what we do. Hmm. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. So for me, it's about embodying who you are. Mm. You know? And so practice becomes you at some point. Yes. But there is always something else to practice anyway, because it never stops. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is also true. And so th how, how did you, you know, as you were kind of on your path and you were kind of different things were influencing you, how did that then come towards the unique self-coaching process? Mm. Like how, how did that come into, into birthing? Yeah. Um, so there were two things that really shifted for me that really um, were a gift to my understanding my practice, my awakening in the last years, in the last eight years. One was um, to come across Ken Wilber's teachings mm -hmm. and integral theory where it really allowed me to connect the dots and to see how things work together and how the pattern can connect. Mm -hmm. And Unique Self is more recent. I came across Unique Self teachings three years ago. Um, and the Unique Self really gave me a sense of what happens after true self. True self being, for me, I mean, this is how I call it and we call it in unique self jargon. Mm -hmm. True self is oneness consciousness, is, is mm -hmm. um, you know, is Buddha mind, mm -hmm. true self, big mind, right? So there is true self, which any person who had a glimpse or a full taste of awakening can access. And from there... You know, the true self is actually is the first answer to the question, the big question, who, I, who am I? Mm -hmm. Who am I? I'm true self. I'm one with everything. I'm part of the seamless code of the universe. And I'm also a unique expression of that, yes. of that seamless code of the universe. I'm not just merged. I mean, I don't disappear. I do disappear when I have that experience. I have that experience of disappearing, but I re-emerge. I don't stay there, right? right. I'm a human being. I'm embodied. And so who am I is that unique expression of that oneness consciousness of, as my teacher, Mark Gaffney says, the, the love and the expression of that love intelligence, a unique mm -hmm. expression of it. So this is what unique self brings to that uh, teaching of awakening, which is so important, yes. I think, in our era where so many people are awakening, but they don't know what to do with their awakening. I understand. And I think one of the things that's often difficult is that 
we, you, know, you can have these experiences of, of what you'd call true self, of oneness and connectivity. And then there's, there's something else that happens that you call the unique self, which sometimes just gets labeled as ego or as kind of, you know, a kind of being narcissistic or kind of... But there's something that can feel pure in a sense of this, mm. is, this is the kind of quantum soup of oneness, whatever, but this is also me, and it feels right. true as this well. This is so true. This is so true, and this is really the point. Yeah, unique self is not your ego. It's mm. not your personality. This is something you need to work with. This is the first step of the work. We work with mm. personality. We work with ego. Ego never goes away. We learn to be friends with it. Right. We learn to love it. We learn to work with it, mm. right? And, and we also learn to put it aside so we can have an experience of our true self, mm -hmm. right? We can have an ego break so we can actually tap into that beautiful sense of being one with everything, which is real reality, which right. is what this is all about. We are based, basing in love intelligence, mm. and we need to reconnect to that because that's the first step, right? Mm -hmm. But then from there... We need to know who we are, right. who we are as that expression, and we need to be devoted to that love intelligence that's trying to leave through us mm -hmm. as our unique self. Which, so is, which is, is legitimate and as valid and as true in its own way as the true self. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. because that's what we're here for. We're here right. for giving it an expression, and if we don't do that, we're not honoring yes. it. And, yeah. uh, and I think also often for people, well, maybe we'll come back to this in a little bit, to, to really show up in their world, they need to have a sense of who it is that's, exactly. that, that, that's showing up. And, and that's so important that you're saying that because um, that's often what people, um, people are scared of actually awakening. There are, there are the people that are awakening and don't know what to do with it. There are also people that don't want to go there because they don't want to hear, become one with everything and forget their be told that there are no one, mm. you know, they have a sense that they are unique. I mean, I mean, I'm special, you're special, right. right? And, you know, talking from personal experience, having experiences in meditation or on retreats of disappearing into a kind of sense of oneness and then coming back and having to show up in a business meeting and there's someone there, someone's got to make a decision and someone's got to lead and someone, mm. and there's the need of how, do, how does this oneness make contact with exactly. the world? Like what's the vessel through, yeah. through which yeah. that contact is made? Yeah, the vessel in the work that we do and in how we work with the emergence of unique self once we have the established contact with true self, the vessel is really the capacity to love. It's the portal. Mm. We help people grow grow their capacity to, to love. So say, say a bit about some of the practices of what helps them grow, you know, contact their unique self, but also grow that capacity for love. Like how, on a more practical level, would you support people in doing that? Yeah. Um, we, we are not used to... Um, our, our human capacity to love is li very limited. We love mostly what we, um, the people that we love are the people we need, or the people mm -hmm. that support us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, like, we, we have a very limited uh, capacity in general to, to love, and we need to grow our love lists. We need to mm. grow our um, expression of love. We need to not be scared of loving and saying that we love. And I'm not talking about just like the, you know, that, you know, soapy love or, or the human mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about outrageous love, we call it in our jargon <laughs> again. The love that, that's really about um, tapping into the, uh, a, the, the, the joy and the, and the, um, the, the, the delight of being in front of a unique person mm -hmm. that is you right now. You know, I'm sitting in front of Alex and I've never had an Alex experience like that, <laughs> you know? And, you know, when I connect in that aliveness of being constantly, you know, in relationship with m people or situations, or, this is outrageous love. This is about mm. being alive. And so 
the capacity to tap into that aliveness that's always already here, but to express it and to live it and mm -hmm. to let it, you know, m explode you in, 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 in joy and, and devotion. That is what it is to be alive mm -hmm. and to be a unique self. So you're really plugged in, um, in the love intelligence that's always there, but you're expressing it as you and through you. Yes. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And, and, and how... What you, one of the things you, you, you mentioned before we started filming was this idea of writing love letters as a way of right. kind of connecting. Yes. Can you say something about that? Yeah, so that's a practice that um, my, my teacher, Mark Gaffney, has developed and we use it in our coaching process. Mm. It's actually a very powerful practice of connecting to that outrageous love. Every morning, sit down and take a moment to connect. You know, it might be a five minutes of breathing or chanting or meditating, whatever mm -hmm. works for you, listening to sacred music. And from that place, you know, just take your pen and write a love letter. But, you know, you, you can write it to someone you love. You mm -hmm. can write it to God. You can mm -hmm. write it mm -hmm. to yourself, mm -hmm. which is the most difficult thing to do, <laughs> actually. <laughs> sure. I like um, it. But it's a practice, so you do it every day. And whether it comes or not, whether it flows or not, you actually write that love letter. And it practices your muscle to, to access your, your direct access to love. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it actually opens the gates, mm. you know, if you do it. Conti continuously, yes. of course, it's and a you, practice, you right? You condition it as a habit. So exactly. Yeah. So sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't feel like it, but you still do it. Yeah, mm. I really it's like an that. awesome practice. Yeah. Actually, I've done it for one full year every day, and oh, wow. I can tell you, it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you also mentioned um, earlier about um, using the Enneagram as, as a tool. Can you just maybe touch on that as a way of understanding both mm. the unique self and the true self? Like, as a, we don't have to go into what the Enneagram yeah. is in detail, but, but just yeah. like, uh, that as a kind of mapping sure. kind of process. So we use different things mm -hmm. in, our, um, in our coaching um, approach, yes. right? We use different tools, and so we, are, we, are, um, have, we have an integral... Um, approach. And when we say integral, we mean integral based upon the work of based Ken, on the work Ken, of Ken Ken being the pioneer yeah. of the integral Yeah, so approach. we use yeah. the what we call the equal lenses, the yes. uh, lines, the levels, the yes. uh, types, yeah, and and the quadrants. And so the enneagram is a tool that we use in the first part of our work when we work on separate self consciousness, which in the nine month process takes about three months. Okay. You know. This is where we start. So we start with, the, with helping individuals know how they contract, what their false core pattern, we call that a false core pattern, which is the uh, personality that they've constructed out of their illusion mm -hmm. of thinking that they're separate from all that is. Mm -hmm. So we, in the process of individuation, develop a false core pattern that is the construct out of the belief that we're separated. Mm -hmm. And so we have a certain way of contracting certain sentences that we tell ourselves, like I'm not enough or I'm too much or I'm not good or mm -hmm. I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. or you know, they are, We all have our own sentences that we don't even know we're sure. saying ourselves, but we are, they're, they're our core beliefs, right? And we live by that. And so we construct that personality according to those core beliefs. And we have ways of posturing, ways of behaving. We have all kinds of ways to solidify that mm -hmm. identification to separate self. And so this is where we start, because this is where people are. And we all are at a certain level of that. We all have a persona, of course. And it's not about breaking the persona and making it disappear. It's about... Um, loosening the grip of it on us because we are not just it. Yes. So we loosen the grip of the separate self and that's the first part of the work. And this is where we bring the Enneagram because the Enneagram is actually very useful in that um, it really gives a, lo a lot of uh, identif um, ideas about how people contract and what, they, th what their core beliefs are mm -hmm. and all the contractions that are um, 
in that part of the work are really useful to uh, to identify with the enneagram. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah. and it, it also it just brings me to something as well that I was reading in the kind of notes you sent me um, yesterday. The phrase that I, I, I the first place I heard it was Ken Wilber using it, but it maybe I don't know what the origin is. This idea of of waking up, growing up, and mm. showing up, and. I th- and my, th- my kind of observation is a lot of spiritual teachings emphasize waking up and there's not quite mm. as much growing up and showing up. And I really like in, in kind of what you're describing that this piece of, there's something about bringing this unique self into the world and right. showing up right. in the world. Exactly. Can yeah. you say a bit, a bit about yeah. that, perhaps why you see that as being important and how that, how that is in the work? Yeah, well, important Obviously, because we are embodied and we need to grow up and we need to show up. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know if everybody needs to grow up, but we do need to show up. We are in the body and we <laughs> Most have, of us need we're to alive, well. right? <laughs> so we do need to show up. Might as well show up as, much, as best as we can, right? And um, so waking up is the first step. Because mm-hmm. if we don't wake up, actually, we don't show up. Yes. And, and to wake up is, is to actually have a taste of your own true nature, which is true self, and we mm-hmm. just talked about that. And waking up, is, you don't need to have a full-blown waking up, realiza- enlightenment realization to actually wake up to the fact that you are one with everything. Yes. And you just have to see beyond the veils enough to have, have a taste. You have to have a glimpse yeah. of it. Yeah. And this is where you start, right? And um, so once you've had a glimpse of it, you n- you're never like you were before. The, the, solid, the solid separate self, even though it will come back mm. and it will still be, do its thing, is, has been um, unmasked. Mm. You know that you are not just that. And, it's, you know, and still there's a lot of work to do, and that's the grow up part. Sure, right? sure. And the work to do is a very... So that, the, work, the grow up part in our process is about emerging, the emergence of unique self. And what I just said about love being a portal mm-hmm. to unique self-consciousness is just half of the picture. The other part of the work at, at this level of emergence of unique self is to work with your shadow. Mm. And so it used to be that we call that process wake up, grow up, clear up, show up. Um, and clear up yeah. the shadow, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so we just make it shorter and call it show up, uh, grow up, including to include the clear, clear up, up is the clear included. Up, yeah. But clear up is about shadow. And yeah. the work, um, what um, Mark Gaffney uh, made a beautiful contribution to shadow work, uh, and it is that he's making a distinction between generic shadow and unique shadow. We, don't, uh, we actually are not, our, our shadow is not our anger, our, our jealousy, our cruelty, or resentment. These are like, Gener- there are shadow qualities that we express, you know, mm-hmm. and we have our own ways of expressing those qualities and when we are not living our unique story. Huh. When we are not in the full expression of our unique self, where those, some of these qualities, these shadow qualities are going to show up because they're actually showing up what we're not living. They're, sho- they're pointing at our light. Mm. So in our process, we have practices that actually have the person question this moments of shadow and follow the shadow to their unique light. Hmm. So like it's, it's, um, it, it's a, a beautiful distinction between, you know, generic shadow and unique shadow. And, and actually s- using it as the path. And That's using really it nice. as yeah. the pointer to your unique self. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. So, wh- what if someone comes to the unique self coaching process? You know, we've got a few minutes left. What? What's the hope of what happens for them? Is I, I think it's really interesting that it's mm. a nine month process. Mm. It's like yeah. I mentioned to you earlier. I was like, it's really neat. Right. So, like, what? 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 Mm. What? What's the 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 wish of 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 what unfolds to someone in that? Yeah. So, someone that would come to us to go through that process would want to, of course show up as their unique self. They mm. want to get a sense of what their unique self is, what's their unique contribution in the world, what is their unique gifts, how do they live their unique life. I mean, they're really, uh, of course, they are, uh, in, they are interested in contributing from their unique um, 
gifts, mm. right? And often this person is overwhelmed by the, you know, the amount of uh, things that there is to do and what is my thing to do and what is my gift. So people that come to us have that inquiry about showing up in the world. And, and uh, some of them have had an awakening experience, some of them have not. Uh, but um, what they can hope from this work is to, um, to access their sense of being in their life, in mm. their purpose. Often people are looking for their purpose. It looks like they're looking for it somewhere else, you know, like, <laughs> where is my purpose? What is my purpose? Yeah. You know, it feels like they're looking for it, you know, like in the street or outside in the next room. So hopefully what we're doing is that we're giving people the sense of my purpose mm. is here. Yeah. And they know what it is. And, and the, work, the people that we've been working with, um, kind of give us that sense that this is actually what, what their the best gift that they, they receive is that they, this process is helping them access their deep sense of being who they are, but not in a, you know, just like a nice idea of uh, really accessing that mm. and, and flowing, um, you know, from that, your purpose flows out of you yes. and it becomes obvious. Yeah, it does. It's true. Yeah. 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 So we're out of time, Claire. But if somebody wants to find out more about the unique self coaching process or you and your work, or how, how can they do that? So they can go on our website, mm -hmm. www.uniquesselfcoaching.com. Great. And so they'll find information about how they can be coached by uh, my work partner, Barbara Alexander, or I. We also train coaches mm -hmm. and um, helping professionals, not necessarily coaches, but people that are in helping professions, learn to facilitate that process for others, for their clients. So anyone who's in a helping profession and who's interested in learning a process that facilitates spiritual development and, and in particular, particularly facilitates the emergence of unique self can train with us. And we have different training programs happening in the States mm -hmm. and in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so they can train with us and actually learn this process and be certified to apply it. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Claire, thank you so much. It's been thank a real you. joy. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. And thank you for watching. And we look forward to talking with you again here on Conscious 2, hopefully very soon. Bye-bye.